Hey, this is Russ. Yeah, we're still inside. Yeah, today is Monday. You'll see this video on Tuesday. Yeah, I was kind of hoping to take the uh, the new U-Free uh, bike out so I can at least kind of ride it and get a feel for it before doing the reviews. But no, it's raining. <laughs> so if, because it's raining, we're not getting out there. So uh, what are we going to talk about today? Well, I wanted to bring up something. Uh, somebody had mentioned that the saddle on the new U-Free bike does not seem very comfortable. Yeah, <laughs> let's talk about that. Uh, I know that the, uh, the previous models, the, uh, the City Robin, City Robin X, City Robin X Plus, all had uh, saddles that were a little bit more comfy than the one that's supplied this time. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, let's let's put it like that. So, but I, I mentioned to to them on the comment back that you know a lot of times I think the manufacturers kind of see see the saddles as something that they have to give you, but they don't really know exactly what you're gonna like and what you're not gonna like. So a lot of us, regardless whether it's a really good saddle but just doesn't fit us, we end up changing it, right? So if you put the money into the saddle. <laughs> <laughs> it may not even be utilized by the person who actually buys it. They're going to swap it out again. So I think, um, and it's just me, is my guess. Manufacturers might be thinking, why give them the most expensive saddles? Because they're just going to change it out anyways. Let's put the money into something else. Um, I, I think that's actually a smart move, really. Um, I don't like the fact that I have to change my saddle out. It just, just like anybody else, you know, oh, it's another thing I have to deal with. But if you think about it, it does kind of make sense because maybe you like a saddle that's wider and maybe somebody else doesn't, right? So let's say the manufacturer spends a lot of money on that wider, cushier saddle. Another person might just say, oh, I'm not going to use this. I, I got to buy something else. Well, now the company spent X amount of money for the saddle and it, it's just going to sit. And, and that, that money could have gone into better other components that everybody could enjoy right maybe a better derailleur or a better something you know so um so in defense of the <laughs> of the u free new bike that's not looking that has a saddle that's not looking as comfy uh, i tend to agree i i think it's a little stiffer than the other ones but i kind of understand why maybe that decision was made now other components on the bike are better so stay tuned for the review and somebody else mentioned too why are you talking so much about colors we don't care get on with the review the review is coming all right that was just an introduction to what came in uh we will we will work on the review as soon as i am able to work on the review okay so there that's out of the way uh what else oh i did let, let's let's get some of these other things out of the way too i did mention that there was another bike that had come in and it's ready to be built and I have unboxed the bike, but I haven't built it yet, but I do plan to build it right after this video is done, <laughs> all right? So uh, yeah, I'm still working on that bike, get it ready too. But again, can't ride that bike either. So <laughs> we're stuck in here. You know, um, I, I keep, I'm, 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 you can tell I'm always itching to get out, right? But the weather is just not cooperating here in the Chicago area. And um, you know, we're kind of stuck, yeah. But, you know, it should get better soon. I mean, we're talking it's the end of March at this point. April's just around the corner, so really uh, it'll start freeing up for us at that point. So, you know, I took a look at the analytics of the, uh, of the uh, channel, too, and it shows that most of my views usually come in the month of May and forward, okay? So as, as the weather gets better, people tend to say, okay, I might be thinking about getting a bike or riding a bike. And so people start watching the videos more. So, but again, you know, companies are getting these bikes out now because they know that people might start be thinking about, you know, what should I buy? And so they start doing some research and then they're hoping that their bikes will be seen and then maybe considered. So that's why they're all coming in at this point. But again, I'm in Chicago. We don't have the ability to go out to ride them quite yet. So we're going to see a whole bunch of reviews happen all at the same time. You know, it might be one right after the next, but um, that's that's what I have to deal with. OK, OK, what else are we going to talk about today? I, I wanted to talk about uh, other types of upgrades that people will do to their bikes beside the saddle. OK, so I was thinking about it and I said, you know, what do people change out? Well, we've already mentioned some things on that video that I, I 
put out for the manufacturers to consider. Uh, the bell is, believe it or not, one of the biggest things people change out because they, they don't like the cheap bells that are usually given, all right? Now, other companies do give some decent bells, but a lot of them, yeah, they're pretty cheap. And, and the one that I use, people always ask me, where do you get that bell, you know, because they always like it. Yeah, I got it on, on two places. I got it at uh, AliExpress, which is, again, a, a Chinese company. And then I got one, I got the, the same ones on uh, Timu.com. And I know a lot of people don't like ordering from Timu, but it was the only place I, I was able to find it. So I placed the order and yeah, they came in. It, it is the bells that I got on AliExpress. It's essentially the same thing. Okay. It was actually cheaper too, but you know, whether you agree with ordering from that site or not, that's up to you. <laughs> All right. So that's where I got them at. And, um, they're, they're cheap bells too. I mean, like I said, they were like a dollar seventy something. Uh, plus, if there was, I don't even remember if there was ship. I think there was some shipping maybe on it. But I usually order ten or more bells at a time. And um, a lot of times, you know, when I sell off the bikes, I, I don't include those bells because then I'd have to reorder them again <laughs> for all the new bikes that are coming in. So I usually take them off and put the original bells that came with the bike. Usually, when I sell the bikes off. Um, because I have to clear space in the, in the house, as you know, um, I will try to put back the original stuff that came with the bike. So you will have to deal with it yourself. Now, if I do sell a bike and it's not, um, uh, I, I haven't put back the original stuff. I've given you the upgrade parts. I will let you know that in the listings. Now, where do you find the listings when the bikes are ready to be sold? <laughs> right. You can go to russisright.com and there's a redirect link there that'll bring you to the russisright.blogspot.com site. And in there, you'll see all of the accessories and things that I usually put on my bikes. Those are the affiliate links and the like. But there's also going to be another post in there that will have the announcements of where when the bikes are being sold. So what's being sold now? <laughs> Let's get that out of the way before we talk about more about the accessory things that people upgrade. Uh, there is the rad, no, I'm sorry, the rad. I don't know why that was in my mind. <laughs> it's probably because it's a small bike. Uh, there is the Magicycle Jaguar Rundi in there. It's the white one, the 48 volt white one. Now that one I did do some upgrades too, and it's going to be sold with all the upgrades because once I sell that bike off, I don't need it all. Okay. So what's on that bike? Front basket is on that bike. That's the, the, uh, heavy duty metal basket you know with the wood bottom and the like so that's on there uh and also the uh, second battery is av available with that bike too so if you're interested in the jaguar rundy from magic cycle the white one take a look at that listing i think i have it uh, currently at 1200 dollars. now you might look at it and say well i can buy a new one for 12.99 well you don't get a second battery with it all right and you don't get a basket either oh and there's a uh a side view mirror as well, a left-handed side view mirror already on there. So if you want that, take a look at that, that listing on the russisright.com site. All right, there you go. All right, so what are the other things that people upgrade immediately? Well, I, I tend to think it's, it's not an upgrade, but it's kind of things that people put on their bikes. Uh, one being a, a, a side view mirror, okay? Now, if you don't put a side view mirror, sometimes people put the, those cameras, you know, rear view cameras with a digital screen. Uh, I just think that those things take up a lot more uh, real estate on your handlebars. So um, it, to me, it's always easier with the side view mirror. Now, here's the thing with the side view mirror. People always ask, do I have to move my shoulder to see it? Yeah, you're going to have to move your shoulder, okay? Because if you mount it on the handlebar, it doesn't stick out far enough. And so uh, your left uh, shoulder typically will get in the way and you have to move a little bit to see it. It's not a real big deal. I've gotten used to doing that. And I really don't prefer having the side view mirror sticking so far out. I mean, some, some of the bikes have uh, the side view mirror where it actually is a bar end mirror where it attaches to the end of your handlebar. Now, that makes it stick out even further. Now, you don't have to move your shoulder when you do that, but... You know, if you have one of those things getting through the doorway sometimes with those things sticking out, especially if you have one on the left and the right, uh, that could be a challenge, all right? So I prefer to just use the standard ones that are mounted on the handlebar and just move my shoulder a little bit to see uh, because I don't need to constantly see everything. But, uh, you know, if I'm looking to make a move, you know, if I'm 
going to make a left turn or maybe merge into that, that lane. Uh, yeah, I want to see what's behind me. I move my shoulder a little bit. It's no big deal. Get used to it. Now, some other people have actually used the ones that are mounted to your helmets. Have you seen that? It's like a little pole that sticks out and there's a mirror. I've never really preferred to have that because I, I always worried that if I fell and that pole kind of poked me in the eye, I, would, I don't think I'd like that. Uh, others have mentioned that that doesn't actually happen, you know, but I always worry about it. <laughs> so I don't use those type of mirrors. I use the ones that are mounted on the bike. All right. Okay. What else do people upgrade or add to their bikes uh, once they get their new bikes? Uh, well, I think here, here's one thing that they should consider, and it has nothing to be put on their bike, but a safety vest or some type of thing so people can see you better than just, you know, your clothes. Now, a lot of times, as you know, I, I'm always wearing black. <laughs> I've mentioned this many times in the past. Uh, yeah, I'm the guy that always wears black. I, I mean, everyone who knows me, that's all Russ wears. He always wears one of these black uh, polo type shirts. <laughs> Is that what you want to call it? Tennis shirts, whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm known to be wearing pretty much all year round <laughs> in black pants. Uh, yeah, I, I mentioned before, this, is, this comes from my law enforcement days. That's when I started doing it. Um, all the evidence techs were wearing black because we just felt it was, I mean, we get dirty when we're out at a crime scene, <laughs> right? It's easier to stay less looking dirty if you had black clothes on. So so that's why I started doing it, and it's, it's kind of stuck. It's, it's always been what I usually wear. So if you ever see me ever in person, it's usually I'm wearing a black shirt with a black pants. All right. Uh, recently, uh, a friend of mine said, well, she, she said, that's, that's kind of like a uniform for you. I go, yeah, it is. You know? And you don't have to think about your, your clothing then, right? But I, I did tell her, I said, sometimes I wonder if people wonder if I ever change my clothes. You know, I, I do. I have a lot of these shirts. I'm telling you, I'm not kidding. If you look in my closet, it's all a bunch of black shirts in there. So anyways, that's another thing. But uh, when I'm riding, I try to wear like a safety vest, right? Like a yellow safety vest or orange safety vest. The only times I haven't done it is uh, recently during the winter months when I was riding a little bit. Um, I can't get those vests over the big, heavy winter jacket and close it. So, uh, so I rode without it. I've always felt bad because I kept thinking, yeah, I wonder if people really see me well enough. Because I have seen before where people wore dark clothes and they were coming towards me on a regular bike. And it was hard to even see them because they kind of blended in with the trees in the background. I mean, you may think about it and go, oh, that, that, how would that happen? But Trust me, when you look out there, it's kind of hard to see them coming towards you. And then you go, oh, yeah, okay, there's a bike coming. All right. If you had the vest on first, the big yellow vest or whatever, I think people would notice that first. So that should be something that, that should be added to when you buy a new bike. Get some type of safety vest or some type of thing that will brighten you up a little bit while you're riding. Okay. All right. So what else, what else do people change out? Well, uh, sometimes people look at the uh, suspension seat post. We've talked about this in the past before. Uh, they, they want a little bit more um, uh, cushiness when, when they hit a bump and maybe their bike doesn't have full suspension. You could add a secondary uh, thing called a suspension seat post. All right. Now, there's two types of suspension seat posts people consider. There's the inexpensive ones that where it's just basically a post and it just kind of go up and down. And there's the ones that actually go a little bit backwards which costs a little bit more money. And so typically the ones that go backwards are made by a company like Suntour. And uh, yeah, you're, you're looking at $100 or so or more, 119 I don't know what they currently cost, but they're, they're, they're up there. Whereas the other types that kind of go up and down, uh, companies like Zoom will make that and, and others, you're probably looking at uh, $30, $40, maybe $50, something in that range. So uh, the ones that go backward a little bit are made a little bit better, okay? It's going to cost a little bit more money, but that is something people consider upgrading. Now, others have said consider a dropper seat post. A dropper seat post is basically if, if, if you like a leg extension like I do, I, I usually have my saddle pretty high up so that when I'm pedaling, I have good extension on my legs so I get more power when I'm pedaling, okay? It's actually better for my knees, okay? And people said that with bad knees, you'd be lower. No, it's not true. I want it higher because then I get a better stroke. Uh, it's harder on your knee when it's lower. Like, for instance, the people who keep their saddles further down so that when they sit, they can put their feet on the ground uh, while they're still seated on the, on the, on the, on the bike. Um, 
your extension of your feet is kind of squished up. You, get, you don't really have full extension. People like that simply because they feel safer on it, but it's not good for pedaling. It actually has more pressure on your knee when you don't have that full extension while you're pedaling, okay? So, so they say consider a dropper seat post. Now what this does is you can have that height that you like for the extension, but then as you're approaching a stop, uh, you can push a button and the seat post will just simply drop down. So when you're fully stopped, you're now having your feet on the ground. And when you're ready to get started again, as you step up on the pedal again to keep moving, you can push the button again and it'll raise the seat post higher, all right? So that's kind of a cool device. It, it takes a little bit of wiring stuff to do, but um, you know, and you can leave that wire you know, separately, or there are types where you just you know, reach underneath the saddle and push a button and it'll drop it up and down. It, to me, it's always been like a secondary thing I have to think about now that I have to push. So I really have never really um, embraced the whole dropper seat post thing, but people have mentioned that you know, for people who like to keep their feet on the ground and also have decent extension while they're riding, that's a good solution. Now you don't get the suspension then, all right? But of course, if you had like a full suspension bike and a dropper seat post, then you kind of get the best of both worlds, right? All right, so what else do people upgrade uh, or just consider changing on their bikes? Um, it's not a right away thing, but I think people start thinking about hydraulic brakes. Those who have mechanical disc brakes usually start thinking, man, I should have bought a bike with a, uh, hydraulic brakes. You could upgrade the brakes. Nothing says you can't, all right? Uh, now, if you know how to do things on your own, you can actually install it yourself. I actually installed mine on the, uh, on the Magicycle Cruiser. Uh, Magicycle provided me with the hydraulic brakes and I upgraded it, okay? So I, having done it myself, I, I know that it's not as hard as people think, but it does take a little bit of effort. And if you're not used to doing things like that, then uh, maybe bring it to a bike shop and have them install it for you. All right, so you're not stuck with a bike <laughs> with those brakes if you don't like those brakes. You can always upgrade the brakes. Now, other things on your handlebar, all right, a lot of people consider upgrading would be um, the handlebar grips. Now, some of the grips that are given, as you know, uh, have a little padding on there, which I kind of like because it, it gives my hand a little bit more uh, something to hang on to rather than just pure round grips but uh, they tend to spin sometimes, right? Uh, you know, after, after you've been holding it for a while, you've kind of warmed up with your hand, uh, it tends to spin. Now, they do make locking uh, handlebar grips with the padding still too. So people do usually consider upgrading the handlebar grips. So why don't they give it to us right away? Some of the companies do, others don't. Others still give us the ones that kind of rotate um, you can upgrade them. You know, everything can be upgraded. Let me, let me say that. Okay. So, um, you can upgrade them. They're not that expensive. Handlebar grips are not that expensive, so you can do it. All right. As we're talking about that thing too, it kind of comes in mind. I, I didn't think about this one, but now it popped in my brain. Um, pedals. All right. Now, sometimes the pedals are given to you, um, are not the best pedals and sometimes they're okay. Uh, as you know, many of the pedals have like these little spiky things that kind of grip into your, your uh, if you're wearing sneakers or something like that, kind of grips into the rubber of your sneakers, keeps you from sliding off the pedals, all right? Now, those things do kind of wear out your, your sneakers after a while, okay? Because it's kind of like digging into it. You could change it out to different types of pedals that don't do it. It has rubber on the, ba uh, the base of the pedal. Um, I have a couple bikes like that. Uh, personally, I like the ones that have the, the little sticky points. <laughs> I know it's eating up my, my sneakers, but my feet don't slide off of them, okay? So you can change pedals out the way that you prefer, and that's, of course, a very easy thing to do. It's just a wrench. Now, they do make a thing called a pedal wrench, which I do have. It's basically a narrow wrench. Otherwise, you can use a standard crescent wrench, but sometimes the crescent wrenches are a little too thick. They don't go in between the pedal uh, and the, um, I don't know what they call it, the crank. <laughs> so, so take a look to see if you can use a standard pedal, um, uh, a standard wrench on the pedal. Otherwise you might need something like a pedal wrench. All right. I think that's basically enough to, that we've covered some of the things that people typically would upgrade once they get a new bike. All right. Um, yeah. And it's kind of funny that, you know, after you've bought this new bike, you're, you're spending more money <laughs> to, to add things to it, but this is how we customize our bikes to fit us. Right? So in the comments today, here's what I want you to do. Put down the things that you would upgrade. 
all right, that you would immediately upgrade if you bought a new bike. Or if you've already bought a bike and you've done these upgrades, put down the things that you prefer to have. Now, obviously we put a lot of odds and ends on our bikes to make it our own. Put down the most important things that you think people should have, not just everything you've done on your bike, all right? What are the most important things you think people should consider swapping out? All right, that's the, that's the topic of today, all right? so. Put that in the comments. Um, and, and again, just a reminder too, uh, I don't usually answer comments that are put in Instagram or on Facebook or Facebook messengers. You'll never hear back from me if you do that. Just stick them in a video, even if it doesn't fit the topic of the video. That's what I look at, and so that's where I will see it, all right? All right, that's all I got for you guys today. Hopefully, weather gets a little bit better. We can be back out there. Anyways, if you like this video, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. I'll talk to you guys next time.